everybody and welcome back after a week of being away to Reaper Pro Tips with me, your host, Anne, and my screen that is totally screwed up. I just noticed. You can tell me I had a puppy crammed in here for a while. I had to, had to puppify. Here we go. Screen is more or less back in place. There we are. Oh, dear me. Yeah, it's one of those days. Woohoo! Yay, it's Monday for me. <laughs> Indeedy, here I am. And we're going to do something new today because uh, I feel like I'm lagging. I feel like my face cam is lagging. Hmm. Let me know if you see anything on the back end, uh, Quindy, just, just in case there's something weird going on. But yes, yes, I am back post wedding. And uh, yeah, I survived my uh, in laws and parents. Barely. <laughs> and uh, managed to emerge on the other side. So now, thank God, there is uh, very little to do <laughs> for the next couple of months. Very lagging. The whole stream? You know, I don't feel it with um, Flying Carpet Guy. I mostly finished him. But at this point, I have nowhere, no other ideas on where to go for him. So I am putting him officially away for the time being, maybe forever. We'll see. I reserve the right not to finish a model if I just have no ideas and I'm not inspired. So instead, we've got Remus because I kind of wanted to do Remus for Halloween anyway. Yeah, actually, I need to go get my knife real quick. One second. One second. Be right back. As usual, I've left something in the other room. It wouldn't be an and stream if I didn't forget something in the other room. Yeah, let's hope, uh, let's hope we don't get lag land. I'd rather not have lag land. Mostly it just seemed my face cam was lagging, even for me. But yeah, we'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes, sorry. Alrighty, we, oh, and my pokey tool is so needing a cleaning. But, well, that's fine. So yeah, so I wanted to do, um, cool. Well, I mean, there is stuff left to paint. I just don't have a solid idea of what I want to do in Aura, and I'm not just going to put something on there, and then later I'll hate it. Um, I'd rather wait, and if I come up with a great idea, then we can go back to him. Cool, excellent. Yeah, excellent, excellent. So, yes. So, I've wanted to kind of paint Remus for a while. Um, I've wanted to kind of do some, uh, try to do maybe some black armor on him. Uh, which is very vampire, very, very vampire. And uh, he's got fur, he's got a cool shoulder pad with a skull on it. Um, he's just a neat, he's one of the, I think, the best vampire that we've got right now. So I put him on his slot of base, although I'll probably break him off of it for basing later. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, I have not yet primed his sword just because I'm, I'm, when you attach it, it's going to go across the body, as uh, oftentimes designs do. So since it's going to be... Ah! It does not want to go anywhere. This is definitely a Monday for me. Uh, so we'll have to pin it into the socket up there. We'll have to figure out how it goes. Like this or something. Um, but we'll have to pin it when the time comes. It doesn't fit great up there. So I'm kind of still like trying to figure out like how I actually want to attach it. I could actually, the way it's done, and all of these swords are like this, guys. Hey, Neural, thanks for the resub. 35 months, almost a song. Um, all of this, these swords are like this, guys, where, and actually I could make it go out like this. But when you've got a sword that's kind of held um, like down like across the body, usually there's an option where you can just choose to swivel it out and have them kind of holding it out instead. Uh, depends on the exact sculpt and how the socket fits together. His, his hand actually fits a little better like this. Um, so I haven't decided yet. 
but uh, that'll happen later. Uh, but just in case I wanted it cross body, I decided not to attach it in the beginning and uh, I just want to work on the model so y'all can see it. So yeah, um, I still did not get a witch model from Ron. I've kind of decided we aren't going to get one. So I just decided to work with Vampire Dude. Um, we also, of course, have, well, you guys, some of you guys haven't seen this, but I set up a spooky base for uh, Kitty uh, Necromancer and we'll work on him as well before Halloween. Uh, Ghost Walker Lady is pretty spooky also, so I think she's pretty good. Uh, maybe we'll do some spooky spirity stuff on her cape. Uh, and then, I don't know, Quindy, I'm thinking about dropping the Elemental Scions out for October just to do some more spooky-ish stuff. Um, just, uh, the Mouseling fits because he's a lighting effect and a lot of people want to do lighting effects for Halloween models. So yeah, so I'm kind of thinking about dropping out the stuff that's not like Halloween-y. Or, uh, I mean, other, otherwise I could just work on like the Necromancer for, and his mini diorama for the last bit. Yeah, well, if he doesn't send it, I don't paint it. Like, it's just, it's that simple. He's already got one from Rhonda, so it's not like he needs me to paint one. So we're going to do something on this one, guys. Um, I haven't really decided what his hair color is. He might be a red-haired vampire. Hmm, maybe. Maybe. We might go Auburn on him. I just really love Halloween, and now I'm, like... Um, now it's almost there. Like it's, you know, we only have like very few days. Let's see how many days we actually have. This might help me figure it out. Uh, doo -doo -doo. So we have today, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We only have eight days. So uh, maybe we will just do a four rotation. We'll stick to the Necromancer, Ghost Walker, and we'll skip to the Mouseling. And we'll do this guy. And uh, we'll just see how far we get. And I may get, I may replace this guy eventually. Ah, he wants to fall off. We'll see. It depends on how he goes. It depends on how he goes. But he's mostly on just for Halloween. So, all right, Remus. That said, I'm going to do a trick with him. And some of you guys, nice. Eight weekdays, Robin. Eight weekdays. I don't stream on the weekends on this show, so essentially I had to look at how many days I actually have till Halloween as far as the stream goes. Eight, eight streaming days. Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But yeah, I was just looking at, uh, wow. <laughs> so they did make up a new color for Halloween, huh? Good, 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 good. I just call it I'm, business days, really. <laughs> for me, they're business days. <laughs> but whatever you want to call them is cool. So I'm going to do a trick on this one that David does all the time. That I hadn't realized he did all the time because I'd seen him do it on models where it made sense, but then I saw him make it, do it on a model that didn't make sense. So, uh, hold on, let me make sure I've got this on the right thing. Yep. I, I assumed y'all were kind of like at loose ends and like free to go uh, traipse off into the wilderness, Twisted Oma, so you know, without me around. But if you're traipsing, led to you getting lost, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, um, one thing that my esteemed husband, ooh, I remember, actually, I, I, I'm not going to really forget, because um, it's weird. It's weird to have husband in, in the vocabulary. Um, one thing David does is he will always, he uh, often, not always, but often, almost always, primes black. Um, and he'll do a zenith sometimes, or he won't, depending on the model. But he always paints the head of the figure white. And I actually uh, ran into him doing this on a dragon. Because he's working on a dragon for Golden Demon. 
And he primed the entire rest of the model black, but he did the head in white. And so this is targeted underpainting. And essentially what it does is it, it forces the face and the head to stand out more just a little bit, depending on the colors you use, of course, uh, against the rest of the body. Well, not totally new. I was married before Twisted Oma, but that was a while ago. But it is odd. It is. It does feel odd. So yeah. So essentially, what David? What David? What would David do? That's what we're doing today. We David would paint the entire head of the figure in white. And then he would do everything else in black or black with zenith. So let us do this. Let us attempt this and see. That's part of why I decided I was going to run on this figure today is because I, I definitely would do it on this figure because he's a vampire. So essentially his skin is pretty pallid. So it makes sense. And I might, I might mix my own vampire skin tone today. I might not use my standard vampire skin tone. I might make something purpley instead. Not sure. If I used my standard vampire skin tone, which is greenish at the base or near the base, um, then red hair would look really good on him. If I go with a purpley skin tone, I probably need to do a dark brown or black hair color. But seeing as he's a blood wolf, I kind of I kind of was in the mood to do a red, a dark red hair, like an auburn. See how dark I could take it and still have it be red. So maybe we'll do that. Maybe I will go with a greenish skin tone and just kind of switch up my usual skin tone a little. You can do vampires purplish or greenish or, you know, just really pale, human-y skin tone, pinkish. The one thing you usually don't want to paint vampires is, is peachy. You don't want that yellow in there. Uh, to warm up the skin tone, it makes it look a little odd. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Quindy, I think I'm going to just temporarily rotate out the uh, elementals so that we can spend a little more time on the spooky guys. So then essentially you can see how the face just really comes out. He's wearing, uh, I think, gloves and gauntlets. So I'm not going to. So the only place that his skin tone is going to show up is on his head. Ah, we're not going Twilight. I don't believe in sparkly vampires. But yeah, I mean, you can. Um, and you can even make it not look too hokey. If you used pearl white and you mixed other normal colors into it, so you took that down the pearlescent on it. Um, but yeah, see, all our relatives came out and it was 70 degrees or 68 to 70 all the time people were here, um, except for in the evening, of course. But yeah, so so this is how David would start out a model. Well, that and, you know, we'd, we'd also do some underpainting maybe on other parts if we wanted to kind of just keep a little bit of our light because remember white primer I mean this is white primer over black but it's uh it's always going to it's never going to be as bright because you're putting usually a pretty light mist of it and if you try to put a heavier mist of the of that over the top then it's going to really uh sorry gotta grab some black gotta touch up my primer because he's a metal model and he had a little rub off Um, but yeah, so your white primer is almost never going to look white. And if it does look white, you've probably loaded it on too heavily and you may have lost detail. So I see also a mold line. What is it with you, vampire? Why are you not cooperating today? It's because, like, I decided at the last minute, because I forgot that today was, uh, Mage Day. Decided to switch it to Vampire Day. Is that the problem here? So let's go in with our knife and get that out of there. The puppy is on the rampage today. 
so there may be crazy later, especially because it's sunny outside already. Um, we uh, start getting more sun in the morning and less overcast, so now her, her triggers are all messed up as far as when she uh, sleeps and when she is awake and being a silly dingo. There we go. Sorry, had to stop and do that. Funny Agent Marvel. That's cool. Alrighty. Going to get some black out. Going to do really quick underpainting on this guy just to go along with our, our white face. Because I, I'm like... I like David. I really hate black primer. Um, I don't work with it. Like it will. I will always start white, or if I do do black, I always do a zenith, and then I do a sketch because I'm not a fan of black primer. I find it really hard to see detail on, and I don't like how I have to work harder to get my highlights to come up over the top of it. So that is why I do not do black primer. Um, Kiki was actually pretty okay for the first day because she was pretty intimidated. So she was actually a very good girl for the first night. And then she got a little bit more ambunctious the next day. But nobody's clothing was torn except Jennifer did get a puppy attacked. But that was actually because she, she was a house guest for a little longer. So Kiki actually um, got more comfortable with her very quickly because she was staying with us. So Kiki absolutely loves Jennifer. And Kiki loving you means lots of lots of puppy nibbles and bites and jumpies. So we we managed it, but she early in she did manage to grab a hold of a piece of clothing and tear it. Other than that, the weekend with the puppy trip went pretty well. Hello, hello, hello. Yep, yep. Thanks, Kodiak. But yeah, so other than that, the weekend uh, went off without too many puppy antics. And where there were puppy antics, uh, they were uh, contained, mostly. Most people understood puppy, that it's a puppy. So you're going to get, uh, you're going to get jumpies. Jumpies and, and uh, much silliness. Also up here, one thing I'll always, uh, underpainting is nice for is like, like up here on the shoulder, technically the fur is probably extending more here, but I've lost a little bit of uh, sculpted detail. So I'm actually going to kind of put in a dark line to uh, distinguish because all of this is fur. Unlike on the other side where we have a shoulder pad, it's very evident that this is all fur on this side and we've just got kind of an area here that's a little bit flat. Either that or it is meant to be a shoulder pad and it didn't fill. Either way, I'm going to paint it as fur. Uh, wedding was good and short and then led to a very tasty dinner. And that's the way I like it. I've been at so many long, boring weddings. And I always detested them. So ours was extremely short. The whole point of it... It, it was nice because we went out to the venue, which is a really, uh, a very cool historic house here in Mountain View, and uh, pretty much just wandered around for an hour taking pictures in cool places with the family. So we got some nice pictures of our family with us, um, and uh, my nephew, some, com some comedy with my nephew because I requested it. Totally wanted Graham in photobombing. My nephew, just for the just for your reference, is uh, to give you reference. My brother is six foot two, and his wife is six foot one, and uh, Graham has now exceeded Pete's height. So my nephew is like six foot three, and he's only sixteen, fifteen. He's a sophomore. So so having him like photobomb us was perfect. <laughs> it's like the gigantic child you cannot miss. <laughs> It's great. So we got a good psycho kind of psycho uh, picture. It was good. It was good. Uh, but yeah, and then there was a very short ceremony and then we all broke and we went back and let the pupper out and relaxed for half an hour and went to dinner. And dinner was perfect. 
our our favorite restaurant one of our favorite restaurants really came through for us on that service was great food was great everybody had a good time <laughs> it's just dogs and you hug huh, wendy well kiki would probably want to eat your clothing then if, if that's really like uh the way it works with you now some of the details i feel like i wish i had concept art like i can't tell i mean i assume he's got a dagger here but he's also got a fold of something over the top of it and i have no idea so we'll see we'll see if i can figure out what this is yes everything went to plan and for the most part um there was only that i did not have a great amount of control of my father and david's father at the farther end of the table partially this was my choice <laughs> But uh, there's concept art for him, Crowley. Is it on? But where do you find it, right? I don't know if we have it up on the website. If I can find concept art, great. Maybe I can find it with a Google search. But yes, as the the dad's uh, talking politics was the one thing that could have uh, gone into the stratosphere on and stress and it uh, only happened toward the end of the dinner and everybody was suitably tipsy that it did not escalate so very cool lady kajara very cool But yeah, so everything went all right. So there, we've got a lot of light. We can see there's a lot of light up on the top of this figure. And then the bottom goes into shadow. And if we want to, we've got two choices here. We can uh, either uh, use our sketch to bring a little bit more light down into the lower areas and kind of bring them up a little bit. Or... We can decide to double down on this and keep uh, make essentially everything up up top bright and keep everything lower down in shadow and make it kind of an artistic statement kind of thing. And uh, and that would be very uh, very Frank Frazetta of us. As Frazetta was known for doing that for escalating uh, escalating his lighting on parts of the model that he really wanted you to look at and then darkening everything going down. Ah. Oh. Sweet. Thanks, Quindy. Great. Oh, very nice, Valandar. That's very cool, Valandar. I hope I hope it works really well. A list somewhere of all the Reaper paints. Um, I mean, you can make a checklist. You could probably use something like Paint Rack, the app. I think a lot of people use apps like that, lady. They've got checklists on those apps of so various lines. Can be very useful. So, so I know a lot of you said a lot of you guys said you were painting spooky stuff for uh, for Halloween. I got my copy of Cursed City, the board game, the Warhammer Quest uh, board game, which is all full of spookies, and I am. Uh, happily anticipating beginning it. That was my wedding present to myself. All right, so essentially, if we wanna keep the light focused up here, we wanna put a little bit of underpainting and then we're gonna, we're gonna tackle the skin tones. I think Paint Rack also helps you like by storing color schemes and stuff or you can store color schemes for models in it, lady. We've got a little skull down here. There we go. And there's a little extra light hitting the bottom of this thingy. So we're kind of focusing at this point. I'm going to focus light. 
then there's fur coming down out of that. And we've got the shoulder pad. But you see, we can really scale it where we've got the brightness, and then we can just kind of drop that off um, down here. Or I can switch and I can mix a gray. Because your zenith doesn't have to be black and white. You can mix a gray and uh, kind of block in some gray highlights down below. But keep them darker. You can even do some wet blending with some black. And uh, just keep bring up your gray just a little bit, like so. So that you can actually still see what your highlights, where your highlights will be, but you're going to take it down. Oh, nice. Reaper Org, Cynthia the Wicked, cool. Cool, cool, cool. And then overgored. <laughs> That's funny. Awesome. Well, those of you on my Patreon um, probably saw my cork base um, video. And I used one of the models on this stream for that. So we will be working with uh, the Necromancer tomorrow. And uh, well, you guys will, who haven't seen it will be able to see the base that I made for the Necromancer. All right, now we're gonna shadow in real dark black behind here. So it's all contrast. Uh, Dalandar. Mostly Dalandar, just uh, wanted to make sure we all took pun damage for this Halloween. Happy Halloween to you too. Now when you're wet blending for a bigger area like this cape, grab a bigger brush. So I'm going to grab my Reaper Zero. That's going to enable me to get more paint on the model and just a wider blend and to cover the surface a lot faster. The Necromancer now has a skeletal kitty and a tombstone. And a cork base. And uh, I'll probably need to do some green work to blend him into it. I could either green or I could try to cut the cork base to kind of sink his base into it. But I don't know that I want to do the latter. I went back and forth over it. I've kind of been just looking at the model. And uh, I feel like... It's not really what I want to do. Nice. Ah, you saw. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, it should be fun. It should be fun to, uh, to work on that basing for that guy, the President Kitty. So this is where we can put in a little bit of gray highlighting down here. He's got fancy pants. This guy has fancy pants. You just can't really see them. I want to bring in my black. Wherever on a model with this with deep recesses, you're going to get some uh, areas where your primer doesn't hit. So just put black paint in there. You don't need to put primer in these recesses because nobody's going to touch these. So the paint's going to be fine. You only want to use, uh, I mean, prim you need primer on areas that might rub off or get dinged, but you, uh, you really don't need primer on interior areas. You can just paint. That's fair, Megadeck. You can do whatever you like with your holiday season or non-holiday season, as the case may be. Yeah, I always felt like if you have Christmas decorations up before Halloween, you're just kind of like, it's a reach. 
people get so holiday fatigued as it is. I have to remember to go get uh, trick-or-treating candy, and I also have to figure out when I'm going to get a pumpkin to carve. I've actually carved pumpkins. I got David to carve with me two years ago, but he's decided that it's uh, it's too much effort for too little reward, and he'd rather be working on a miniature if he's going to expend that kind of creative energy, and that's fair. Because, yes, truly, I could be working on a miniature instead of carving a pumpkin. But... Um, Halloween. So, enough said. So, like, if I bring up everything down here, it's going to draw, you're going to suddenly see that foot start to stand out. It's going to draw the eye down there, right? So, if you don't like that, then throw some of your, uh, throw some darker gray over that. Bring in your black. Really knock that foot down. And then only underpaint with a darker gray. We can see, you can see there a second ago how that really pulled the eye, right? It's like when you have that foot standing out, like hitting the light like that, it's like, whoa, and then you look there. But if you uh, use a gray instead, let me mix this gray up here. Then you can keep the bottom part of the model pretty shaded. Some people around us leave their Christmas lights up year round, and uh, a couple of them have had theirs had theirs on. But I just try to ignore it and not walk near their houses. So you can give it a little bit of highlight down here. However, if I do decide to make this black armor, it's going to be repainted black anyway. So, but there, the foot is standing out just a little bit again, just with what one tiny highlight. So. Just a little bit so it shows up. But yeah, so now we can see that, that we're doing definitely a top-down lighting where everything down here is kept more shadowed. And this can be hard to pull off now if we do decide to do uh, black armor. It could be very difficult um, because we need to have enough uh, light down here to convey all the information about our armor. So it may be a bad, it may prove to have been a bad decision to make everything dark and to go with this dark kind of, uh, kind of this stylistic choice, right? Because that's what we're doing. We're, we're choosing to make the light dimmer down below, which is definitely a style choice, not necessarily a realism choice. We're trying to get a visual effect. And uh, we're sacrificing some realism to do it, but that means if we're doing something funky like black and mm then uh, it's going to really limit what we can do down here to convey that uh, information and remember on this kind of thing if, if you do that if you're like this is a great idea and then you do it and it proves not to be a great idea you can always change your mind there is no miniatures police that's going to show up on your doorstep and say hey you you have to go and follow through with this now you chose to do it Nobody cares. Just, uh, you know, make the model look cool. So we've got kind of everything blocked in here. Just bringing in this uh, greave here, the bottom of the greave, so we can kind of see. How funny, Karnika. Yes, things are not special if they're available all the time. Yeah, Nara. Yeah, I kind of, we could have done that too. We could have just kept our lights up, but except our lives, lights look like icicles. And so it's not really, not really suitable for Europe. They're not generic lights. That's the problem. All right. So up here, I do have to touch up an area. Okay. Well, let's just run with what we've got, I think. I'm going to sketch this uh, shoulder pad really quick just because it's elaborate. But yeah, they do have LED lights now that can be switched to different holidays. And that is one solution.
I thought about getting ha Halloween lights, but maybe next year. We do have a house down at the far, far end of our street, way down from us, that does uh, does have the full Halloween set up. up. All their trees are wrapped with uh, orange and purple lights, and they've got hanging lights as well. And again, I'm just going to do some quick black to bring out this shoulder pad a little bit out of the fur. But the uh, shoulder pad is definitely up near the light, so we get some pretty strong lighting. Except where uh, other stuff overhangs, so you still got to keep that in mind. Where the crown is overhanging, it might not get the top of the forehead here. I have not ever used it. Um, should be fine for metal minis, I would think. Assuming it doesn't, I mean, I don't, I haven't ever looked at it at all, so I have absolutely zero opinion of it. If the grit they use is of a type that will take paint off without hurting the metal, then it seems like it might be okay. But I have not ever, uh, use such a thing. I don't strip minis, Mac. That's the thing. I never strip models. I always just paint them over because I, I'm only ever using really thin paint for my paint style. So I can, I can and have painted over a model five times before I started to see a loss of detail. And luckily on the fifth time was the color I wanted to stick with. Um, so yeah, I just don't strip models, so I'm not the one to ask for opinions on various ways of stripping models. I would just rather not, I'd always rather just uh, paint over it. In some cases I prime over it, depending, because I, I, my primer coats are usually pretty thin as well. Oh. So I can usually get away with a to one total repaint on a model, depending on the size and uh, what it is. Yeah, well, if you think it works, it works. Like, if it works for you, rock. Rock on. I just don't, uh... yeah, I just don't have experience with it because I just don't, I don't strip minis. Alrighty. So we've got a pretty nice, we maybe want to bring in a little light here. Uh, on the upper part of the cape because again we're not doing we're doing this in a stylistic way not necessarily realistic way so we're putting maybe a little bit more light up here and then we'll essentially blend it out as we go down Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, sand blasting sounds as long as, like I said, if as long as the grit is uh, of a sort that won't hurt the model, you're cool. Maybe uh, limited usage now that metal is um, a little less common. But if you still have a bunch of metal models that you're painting, then awesome. Oh, very cool, Twisted Armor. So yeah, just getting a little bit of extra light there so that it matches everything else we're doing. Yeah, the beauty of the hobby is there are endless meth methods, yep. Yeah, I mean, like I said, as long as you're working with metal models, you're probably cool with the Sandblaster. Unless you're working with a really soft metal but I assume then you could just adjust something. 
I've just never like liked stripping models just because I'd always it, it's always imperfect. And honestly, I always got better results just by priming over as long as I was using light coats. So I wasn't globbing up detail. There, that's a little better. A little bit of light, a little bit of light. Excellent. So now we've got our light much stronger up top than it is down below. Which is great. And again, once we start doing the NMM on this, we may find that we have to make some modifications. But so looking at this guy, let's actually back out and look at him. So yeah, we can really see that there's a lot of light up top, all in a kind of a halo, right? A big circle. And then it fades quickly, drops off quickly down below, but there's enough detail that you can still see things. So let's try to do this. Let's try to really uh, punch this up and see how it works. So if I'm going to go with my greenish skin tone, then usually what I am doing is a grayish green over a gray base coat. So I think I'm going to, use, I'm going to mix Grave Gloom uh, this time with my skin tone. And I think I'm actually going to use cloudy gray. Well, maybe I'll use, I usually use rainy gray. So let's reach for that. I think I've got rainy over here hanging out. I have stone gray. I have rainy gray. So given the choice, you can see that rainy is lighter significantly than cloudy. Um, I'd go for this color and no darker. If you're going to go up to white on a skin tone with Vampire, you're almost always going to go up to white. So I'm going to go uh, straight over Rainy Gray, over the white face. And then I'm going to mix, uh, I'll probably have to mix a little bit, probably a half and half of Rainy Gray and Grave Gloom. Or maybe, maybe a one to three, we're seeing it, we'll see. I'm looking for kind of a um, a little bit of a grayed out green, but not not. I don't want to totally lose all my uh, all my green, but I want a little bit less. The color I typically use for this is pale olive, ninety thirty six, but I'm going to try to make grave gloom work. I had to get my rainy gray actually mixed up. Uh, it's a lot of work to decorate. I get it. And that's why I usually we don't have decorations, Halloween decorations for the house yet. Let's see, I need to get everything a little bit more straightened out. There we go. I have enough work around the house as it is. All right, so Grape Bloom is a lot brighter than Pale Olive, so I will have to gray it out. So I just put a couple of drops in there. I'm going to throw a couple drops of, drops of the gray in, and then I'm going to tune from there. And the green is actually not a base coat. It's my first highlight, so I also need to add a little white. I may use an off-white, like Cairn Stone. Yeah, I don't know. I mean... It depends on how busy and stressful my life is. When I've got a lot else going on and I'm focusing a lot on other things than Halloween decorations, pretty much it's just I, I will devote an afternoon to carving a cool pumpkin. And that's what I'll do. That way at least we have something to decorate for the trick-or-treaters. I'm going to put a couple of drops of water in that. Let's see how that comes out. I'll mix up my gray for my base coat. I like to have a gray pallor or a grayish color as a base for vampire skin because it makes it immediately look unhuman. All right, so that grayed it out, but not as much as I would like, and it didn't lighten it as much as I would like either. So let me pop another drop. 
of Kernstone in, maybe even two drops, to see where that leads us. Gonna make a pretty big paint puddle pretty fast at this rate. So if it doesn't shift to where I want it, then I'll uh, pop it into the next, uh, pop a bunch of brushfuls into the next thing, and then I'll continue from there. But actually, this is about what I want. I want a pale grayish green, a little bit olivey, doesn't hurt, um, and I'll use that to highlight my gray. And I don't want it too different. I do want it lighter, but I don't want it like really crazy different because I like them to blend together. Which is another reason that I mix the color by using my base color in it. And then we'll mix our next color for the highlights. I did this skin color on, uh, or a variation of this skin color on my Monique de Noir Chibi, for those of you who uh, remember it. And it's, uh, it's hard to uh, convey it on camera. The camera tends to lose the subtleties of the skin tone. But it ends up looking almost pearly. Because I usually highlight it with a pinkish color. I may not this time because I want to do his hair as an auburn color. So the gray is pretty pale over the white. Right? It doesn't look, it looks much lighter. And this is the magic of making of painting the head of the model white. Any color you put over the white is gonna look lighter than it would over black. And so essentially it's going to make the head stand out more and be more vibrant of a color unless you put a crap ton of layers over, right? Like the more layers of paint you put on top of the white primer or the black primer, the more you overcome that starting with that color, the more you cover up your white or your black paper. Um, so it's perfectly possible to raise up or to drop a white primer down to the point where you can't tell if it might have been black primer and vice versa to raise up a black primer to the point where it's hard to tell if you started with black or white. Yeah, my neat GB is a really good GB in my opinion. Alrighty, so then we've got this. I do want uh, to get some liner on this. So let us get liner on here. Hey, D. Clearman with the crazy sub of 42 months. How's it going? Right now, I'm really looking forward to just getting back to my routine. The puppy was very uh, uppity uh, because her routine, of course, for two days was completely shattered. Two days and a bit if you count that Jennifer stayed uh, an extra day. And puppies whose routines are shattered are uh, puppies who are uh, very, very uppity. Hey, that's a good problem to have, Kirst. The best problem to have is that's when it's time to do a Halloween little mini diorama. Time to build a graveyard scene. Build your own necromancer scene. So I hate to say it, but this guy would actually be better in Bones USA. His eyes are a little bit uh, shallowly, uh, took a bit shallow in the mold, either that or the mold is wearing a little bit because they're not, the eyes are not well defined. So I've got to kind of go in here with my liner and uh, see that went way too low. It's hard to see on this side of the model. There we go. I'll have to tackle it from this side. Um, but the eyes are really indistinct. You can see they're not, they're not sculpted great or they're sculpted great, but they haven't taken in the cast. Sorry. I know this is probably a, a digital sculpt, so it's the cast that probably was at fault here. So instead, I have to kind of paint them in. They're slightly there. 
But this is where liner is really ne necessary. You have to bring in that detail. You have, otherwise your eyes are just going to be like not visible. So I've got my eyes blocked in. They are there. Yeah, that or yeah, as you're right, it you're right. A D and D campaign would also. So I've got a mouth here. And then I've got that mustache. But always, these are the two things I always put in. Outline the eyes and the line of the mouth. After that, it's time to put a demarcation between the hair and the skin. And I put a line between the hair and the skin because I want to be able to kind of judge how uh, how the blending of my skin actually looks. I find that if I don't have this defining line, it's a lot harder for me to judge my highlights and my blending and how the skin actually looks when everything else on the model is primer. And then we've got our beard, of course, and our mustache. A real light touch with this is helpful. And we've got that beard coming in here. I often don't like models with facial hair, but this uh, model has a really nice bold face and is uh, his facial hair is well defined and it, it's still, it's like, like some dwarves, I feel like it's all beard, but this guy is uh, like, he still has cheekbones and, and a nose. He's still got enough room on his face for you to give him expression and character and to have a bit of skin to paint. Which is one of the reasons I picked this model. I'm going to bring the bottom of the beard around so we've got his lower lip. Just want to leave a little bit of that. We need to get the bottom of the nose. And yes, I do do all of this before I start highlighting the skin. And I would do all of this before highlighting the skin, even on a, a human figure, not just a vampire. I find it especially helps on pale, models with pale skin tones. Yes, Dee Clearman has been around for a long time watching us, almost four years. That's pretty crazy. very long time. All right, now let's get these skin tones started in and we'll put the uh, base coat for the hair on as well. And I think I have my auburn shadow over right over here. I do. So we're going to use that. And normally I wouldn't do a redhead with red on the model and I was planning on making this cloak red, but I think I can make it work going uh, real dark with my shadows on the uh, auburn hair, and then also using a lot of purple to shade the red to drive the red on the cape colder and keep the, uh, he the red on the hair warmer. There's also the fact that we've got all of this other stuff in between our hair and the red cape. So if you really wanted to, we could go goth girl red up here and do the same red here, and it would just serve as you know the same kind of point of color. Um, that said, I'm not gonna do that to this poor guy. I am going to mix a little bit of a darker shadow. I'm going to grab my liner and mix a little bit into my gray uh, to get kind of just a little bit of a grayish shadow color. And I am going to put that into the eye sockets here. 
right above the eyes that I've lined in just to bring the sockets out a bit, bring a bit of shadow into that. And maybe even introduce a little bit of a shadow in between the eyes there um, to bring out the nose. Because uh, you usually do have some shadows on the side of the nose. And this guy's nose is actually big enough and well-defined enough to do this on a 28. So I'm going to paint in the sides of the nose in a shadow. Like so. I've still got my regular base coat here. So if I want to maybe thin that out a little bit, I can do it. Blend it in a little bit. And how delicate on this you want to get is up to you. He also kind of has a furrow on his brow. Yes, we are still married. Although I think, uh, I don't remember, he said he wanted a divorce last night. I told him I wanted a divorce this morning, so you know. <laughs> I forget why. I forget what it was. It was something funny. So I'm going to again use a little bit of a shadow here, shadow color, because he's got these heavy brows and I feel like he's frowning. So I'm bringing in that shadow there. Going to emphasize that shadow by taking it just a little darker by mixing my gray and my rogue liner. And I'm, I'm going to come in underneath the cheekbones as well. So now we've got the, the face kind of brought out. I think if you can joke about it, it's less likely to happen, Bryce. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna bring in a little bit of this green. Now the key is, um, over the gray, the green is just going to look slightly, it's going to give a slight greenish cast to the skin. Probably won't be even visible on camera, we'll see. I don't want to cover up a lot of the territory. I mostly want to just put in a highlight. And a slight green shift is okay, because I can neutralize it. Yes, Jen did the marriage. Jen actually said it was one like some of the best fun she's had in a while. She really enjoyed marrying us. Hey, and now she's ordained. She can do all sorts of mini painter weddings if she wants to. So yes, we were married by Jennifer Haley. Esteemed, world-renowned miniature painter. Because why not? Mostly, and it was funny because um, David felt more strongly about this than me, but David really wanted a friend to marry us. He wanted somebody who knew both of us and was a good friend. So Jennifer was really the friend that stood out, and she was willing to get right in for it. Uh, no, not really. Just had to read up on exactly what she needed to do, but the California form is pretty straightforward. Um, Universal Life Church is pretty much okay most places. There are a couple states that have problems with it, but it, California is not one of them. If you want to be an ordained Time Lord and marry people in California, they're fine with it. And yes, Time Lord is one of the options if you want a, a title. Well, Jen and I have been very good friends for a very, very long time, Bryce. So I didn't know if she would be up for it because it did was a lot of people, a lot of strangers, you know, and in a pretty public, you know, setting. But she was she was up for it, and she did a great job. Any bloopers were entirely caused by me, so I'm taking out a little bit of that shadow, but keeping a little bit of it. So now you can see the kind of green shift. 
because I've covered over now a lot of the skin with that green and there's enough, uh, enough um, distinction from the gray and the black and the white around it that you can see the greenish color. But we're going to be going over the top of this with actually a pale pallid pinkish skin tone and that will neutralize the green while still giving it a bit more complexity. But yeah, so I was happy. Like in the end, it was much nicer to have one of our best friends uh, do the wedding. So, and all our family were like cool with it and liked Jen, so it was all good. So um, the pink I would use for this is always the same. Uh, Pale Flesh here, 9446, is actually uh, kind of an, uh, an old uh, match for Pallid Flesh, the old GW color in the Hex bottle when the range was back in back there in the dawn of time when I was painting with Games Workshop Paint. Um, so it's pinkish, but it's very pale. And what happens is the pink is very understated, just like the green is kind of understated. And they tend to neutrally neutralize each other out. Pallid flesh is also very pale, but since it is, uh, it's not white, not not so pale that's an off white. So white will still be used to highlight it. So then, if you look at those, there's your complementary colors. So this is a complementary color skin tone. It's what I've done for vampires for a very very long time. If you want to see me do it on a bigger model, go back and look up the Chibi uh, Monique. Monique de Noir that we did uh, a couple of years, a year, a couple of years ago. I think it's a couple of years, yeah, two years ago, I think. I did it on, since that was a chibi, I was doing it on a much bigger uh, face, so. But yeah, actually, Jen is uh, the only person that has been to both of my weddings since my parents could not make the first time I got married because it was done very quickly. All right, let's see here. So now I want to make my highlights smaller uh, and focus on uh, the top of the brow ridge, the center of the forehead. Now this will be uh, not only a complementary color, but also covering up some of the green no, Bryce, we didn't, yeah, we didn't want presents. We didn't want a lot of publicity. I, um, I'm pretty private about this stuff, so we, we decided to mostly say no gifts. Um, a couple of our relatives tossed us a bit of cash, which is fine, but, uh, yeah, we, I mean, we, we do okay, so we don't. We didn't feel the need to get a bunch of gifts. There we go. Just top of the cheekbone. Again, I'm getting that deep crease on the forehead, and I don't really want that. So I'm going to grab my gray actually, and thin it a little and bring it back over a bit. I'm going to kind of glaze it over this whole area, try to unify it a little bit, block out that line a bit. Yes, Stafford, true enough. a little better and uh, if at any point I feel like I've gone too green either I can glaze with my gray or I can bring in more of this pink and also make the pink a little stronger to try to neutralize it um, the green is probably going to be popped out quite a bit <laughs> just some minis yeah But 
But yeah, the auburn hair is probably going to make the green on the skin tone stand out a bit. So we'll see how I feel about it when I get there. Kind of block out that side. There we go. I like that a little better. So that skin, that's bringing the skin tone up quite a bit, that pallid flesh or pale flesh. No, it's cool. We know our friends support us. So we just decided to go with no, no presents, no presents necessary. We do not lack for stuff and neither of us are like, like we have enough stuff. So we are like, we're likely to use the, um, the cash for a, a small trip once the pupper is older. So the face is coming along pretty well. Still not real happy with the forehead, but you know what? I need to put eyebrows on him anyway. So I'm gonna block in the eyes. I may give him glowing red eyes. I'm not certain. I'm gonna grab some white paint and at least to get the whites in. And in this case, I am going to use um, a pure white because the skin is so very pale. So when you are painting excessively pallid, pale skin, um, I know most of the time we tell you not to use pure white for the whites of the eyes because normally it just makes minis look staring and unnatural. But when you are painting a really pale person or monster, sometimes there's nothing for it but to do that or the eyes won't show up. And in his case, I may make his eyes glowy red. I'm not certain yet. So yeah, there we go. Lost a little bit of my lining there. There. All right, so we've got our little eyeballs. We've got our skin that is a different color than the hair that is white. So let's block in our auburn hair and see how green that takes our skin tone. The other thing I could do if I decide the skin is too green and I don't want it that green is I could actually take a real pale pink and just put that over the skin to neutralize the green. So our auburn hair here is going to look really dark and I think the first thing I'm going to do is actually take it a little darker and what I'm going to use with that is I'm going to use Rogue Shadow. Rogue Shadow is a liner color that it has a lot of red and black in it. It's not like the old red liner, it's not that red, but it definitely has that shift. And so I feel like I wanna take the, the hair a little bit darker there. And if I feel like the hair is also a little bit um, brown for what I want, another thing I could do is add a drop of clear magenta to it. So I think I'm gonna do that. So Auburn Shadow, four drops, plus one drop Rogue Shadow, plus one drop clear magenta. And what this is going to do, hopefully, is magenta, clear magenta has a lot of pigment in it. It is a red. It's just a purpley cold red. I'm curious as to how this will uh, shift things. It should shift it a little away from orange and a little bit darker. However, my auburn hair, uh, my auburn shadow does have a, a very high pigmentation, so it is hard to shift. Where is my black base? I wanted to I've, I've misplaced everything um, since I was uh, playing around here. Yes, I do not know where my black base went. Curses! How am I supposed to show people what color things actually are? Um, I guess I'm just going to have to reach for a smaller black base for now. Or a couple of small black bases. There, so you can see a little bit. There's that color. And that's, that's a little brighter than it really is. So let's see here. More like that. 
So it did shift a little colder, a little less, a uh, little less orange. I think I am going to start with that color. I could go with another drop of magenta to see if I can shift it even colder. Maybe I will. Let's try it. And we're going to put that in there. And purple it out a little bit. If you keep adding magenta, it'll keep shifting it slowly away from orange. Now it's pretty, really pretty dark and a little colder. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to grab it and apply it. I can always, of course, put shadows on it to uh, encourage its shift as well. I really do feel like I want this guy to be a redhead, though. Really dark red. And I'm going to be pretty careful. Just in applying this, his facial hair is, uh, the mustache is pretty small and there's details I don't want to wipe out. So I got to be careful and use a smaller brush. Bring in the beard a bit. Trying to figure out where my focal point is here. I feel like I have to actually come in with my hand. There we are. Yeah, I miss the rain, send rain. Um, this is metal, Net Jams Jr. Saddle Brown is a little reddish, um, kind of, uh, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't use, I would probably use Black and Brown with Shield Brown. Shield Brown is more neutral. Saddle is just too red. I don't know how it would look. It depends on the other colors on the model because a saddle is also really muted. Yeah, send some rain. You guys have a lot of it. My allergies are making my eyes teary lately, and that's, I think it always happens around this time of year. It makes it hard to see details and paint them, even with the reading glasses. But yeah, this guy is metal. He is a, uh, hold on, I'll get his card. He is a Dark Heaven Legends, which is Reaper's original metal line. He is a 3912 Bobby Jackson Sculpt. Vampire. And I'll be using probably some dark reds and purples to shade this hair.
But yeah, I feel like I need to take it darker and mute it out a little bit. Because right now the red hair is definitely very strong. And it does make the skin go a little greener, but actually I don't mind it. Yeah, we need quite a bit of rain out here. Kind of hoping uh, that we might get a little more rain this winter. All right, I think I need some dark purples and dark reds. So over the white, the um, this is another thing. The auburn would be darker if I had painted his hair black and then put the auburn over it. But I want the eye to be drawn up. We want a lot of light on the top of the model, remember, is what we're kind of trying to play around with. That's why we underpainted all of our light up higher instead of down lower. So the top of the model is much lighter. Um, and we focused our highlights up there and then down below we're doing, we did our zenith with a gray to black instead of uh, bringing the light all the way. Yeah, um, Vampiric Mist is too pale. You're going to need a shadow of some sort on that, Agent Marvel. Like I said, like my shadows for white are actually this color, which if you look at it is quite dark, and the skin is going up to white. So be careful on that because uh, everybody thinks you got to keep your pale skin pale, but if you don't have dark enough shadows, you won't be able to see any details. It'll just look like a white blob. But yeah, if you're going with any like vibrant or bright colors on it, like a brighter red, then um, using saddle brown is a big no, I'd say. And because it's reddish, um, it just like with this guy, the the you know it could clash. Depends on what color you make everything in between. I'm planning to go black with the armor on this guy, so that's going to put a pretty heavy barricade between the red hair and the red cape when I originally or when I eventually get here. And the fur on his shoulders, I'm probably going to go gray with, probably wolfy. Um, well, I mean, it's auburn shadow. This is meant to be our auburn base. If you want a, a dark red hair, this is this is the color I made. So I did darken it, yes. I did add rogue shadow and magenta. But I wanted to cool it down a little bit because he's dead. Um, I'm going to grab uh, Urgothor Ren and... Monarch purple. These guys. Very dark. Probably mostly going to work with the purple. Yeah, we're a severe, severe drought also. Not allowed to water things and stuff. Though I water enough to keep, uh, keep our plants alive. All right, so a monarch is a very dark purple. Very dark, right there. I'm gonna try that, I think. I might not need the Urgothoa. Again, I wanna kind of chill down this color and make it colder because he's undead and I want it to feel cold. I don't want any play, anywhere on him to feel super warm. So having gone this uh, vibrant with the hair, I need to knock it down a little bit and I'm gonna use purple to do that. So I'm gonna do a four to one, or sorry, four to two, two to one uh, paint to water mix on this uh, Monarch. Yeah. 
and we are almost the end of stream, so I'll just knock this hair uh, a bit darker and colder. I'm also going to use this to shade, even though I started with a shadow color, because I am planning uh, to make his hair dark red. I can absolutely bring in and making make this auburn color the mid-tone instead of the shadow as it is in the red hair triad and bring in uh, bring in some shadows. Bring in purple down there. Let's get a little closer. Yeah, weather's getting a little bit crazy. And by that I mean a lot crazy. I'm just hoping we get a bit more rain this year because we, we actually had a couple of uh, days with sprinkles in the summer, which is very rare for us here. So I'm kind of hoping we get a winter, but that's a precursor to a wetter winter. Bring in a lot of shadow color, darkening down. And see how that cold that I put that over that beard, I just left a little bit of that lighter color. But see how cold the beard looks now compared to the top of the head. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah, let's check on the Alpaca Nation. They might be confused. So we're darkening down. See how it darkened down the sides of the head. This is another, again, talking about how colors change inevitably when you start to shade and highlight them. So I've shaded down the part there. You can see how much darker it takes it. So no matter what your local color is, whatever you start with, your base color, you can change it and you will change it as you start to apply shadows and highlights. So if you want that uh, local color to really stay, you need to make an effort to keep a lot of it and not cover over it with your shadows and highlights. Otherwise, everything shifts and changes as you uh, begin to shade. I've knocked a lot of that. Now wait, now it looks better. Now the hair looks better because it's been darkened and we have higher contrast. Higher contrast. Between that and the skin. We still have very we still have a greenish shift to the skin, and I'm gonna keep that for now. I do need to put eyebrows in though. And this is delicate. But you really want to hit the brow ridge. Sure, you have a great day too, Turgeon. Okay, Luca will not be on today. Got it. So I'm putting any little purple to my uh, hair color before I even put it on the eyebrows here.
There we are. Oh, COVID. Well, hopefully Luca will recover well. Now, if you want this guy to be really glowery, we need to bring his, his brows closer together. So if we want him to be really frowning, we need to bring them in and down like so. And we probably need a little bit of adjustment from the top too. So I'm gonna grab my, my pale flesh. And we can grab our green or our gray. And uh, if we lose a little bit of our nose ridge there, a little bit frownier. Some models are easier to do the eyebrows than others. And you can always take your skin color and adjust them. They really are very easy to adjust. So yes, it takes finer control to paint them on, but he's just tired. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I hope he gets through it fast and uh, recovers with no blips. And oh, the skin could be a little smoother on this model, so I'll keep that in mind. And next time I come back to it, we can play with it a little. Alrighty. But we've got kind of the start of a vampire here. We've cold, cooled down his face a bit. Trying to get it to where we can get it to about where it looks on camera, about like that. It looks like it in person. And the shadows are dark enough to bring out the features. This is the important thing with really pale skin. This is why you go actually darker than you would think with your shadows. If you do not, you won't, you'll just have a blob for a face. You won't be able to bring out the features of the model, especially on a 28. When you're working on a bigger model, you can get around this. You don't have to go quite as dark. But we do have uh, all of this stuff. I will grab a little bit of purple. I think I'm going to keep that lower lip, that gray green, though. I was thinking about purpling it out, but now I'm thinking, hmm, I might need it. All right. We've got at least a start to him. There in the ear. But yeah, so good. Excellent. I'll go a little tiny bit longer than the papa needs to go out. And she probably heard me say her name, so. These days she's papa just as much as she's Kiki. Our animals all get several names. Alrighty, I think we are good. We've got a frowny vampire, frowny redheaded vampire. There we are. And like I said, we're a little rough. We could get better blending here, but for now, we're okay. Oh. So we will call it there, and uh, tomorrow we will work on the old Necromancer. And if we, uh, we will show the base, although I don't know if I'll actually work on him on the base tomorrow or if I'm actually going to work on just the kitty, getting, getting the kitty more done since he's very, uh, very duochrome right now. Um, since he has gray fur, I need to really add in some other colors to pull him together. So yeah, there we go. So come back tomorrow for kitty. And uh, thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming along, and uh, thanks for all the congrats, and I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day. Uh, yeah, see you later.